who dictates where the size range should end. There's a whole segment of women that are being ignored. They make these excuses, oh, the sizes don't sell. Sizes don't sell because that woman's not being marketed to. You know, it's like people are telling me, you're not worthy of dressing well. You're not worthy of being able to shop in a store. Well, I'm on this earth and I'm a human being just like everyone else. Why can't I have the same options? As a fit model, I provide a service and I wanna get it right because women are gonna wear these clothes and I wanna make sure that it fits them well. I'm Marcy Cruz and I'm an extended sizes fit model. I think that I'm the only model signed to an agency uh, to do extended sizes fit. I'm a size 26, 28. They talk a lot about um, fit issues as a plus size woman, more so when you're over a size 24. There are several plus size brands that stop at a 24. God bless Khloe Kardashian for including plus sizes in her brand, but I can't wear any of her clothing. It's a job, yes, that I get paid for, but you know, I always say fashion is personal. It's a big responsibility. People think it's like all glamorous and fun, but you gotta get the fit right. I think the boat's coming. All right. So to prepare for a fitting, uh, first of all, always be on time because they book you per hour. If you get there late, you might not even be seen or you might get paid for half the time. I don't wear any makeup. I wear like maybe a little teeny bit of concealer here and there and like some lip balm because makeup can get on the clothes. And if you're gonna be switching out and changing out of a lot of clothes, then the makeup comes off. I usually uh, take my measurements. If I gain or lose weight, it does affect the jobs that are given to me. I don't know if there are any interest in fit models in a size 24 because you're crossing over into what I say is mainstream plus size fashion. Today in New York City, it is 90 degrees, but it feels like 110. Um, as you can see, I took the shuttle to the ferry. Now I'm in a cab on my way to Universal Standard for a fit gig. My first fitting gig, I was so nervous because I didn't know what to expect. You have to really be honest and fearless in your voice and saying, this is too tight, or I don't like this length, or I think you need this. When you walk into a place and you're my size, you automatically have your guard up. When I walk in there, they treat me like everyone else. You know, I, I had thought I was confident. We have to call them up. But I realized when I started it that my confidence wasn't 100%. Hi, it's Marcy. Okay, cool. I'll come again. Okay, all right, thanks. I convinced myself that I was just trying to just, you know, kind of observe and learn. Hi. But deep down, I had to admit that I was scared to voice what I was thinking and feeling because I thought no one would care. Because it's like, well, fashion's never been accessible to me before, and no one cared before what I said. How are you? Why, thank you. Listen, they offer my size, and they hired me to do this. So it kind of honed my voice, which led me to now, you know, you can't shut me up. <laughs> I prepare my model bag the night before. New shoes for the chub rub, some lotion, deodorant, toothbrush, my leggings. So I also carry like some light shapewear because sometimes it depends on what you're fitting. You want to see how it looks um, smoothed out. These are like very light, non-constricting kind of, they look like biker shorts. Okay, Marcy. Come on, thank you. Thank you. Oh, this is pretty. I think Marcy is, um, she's unique in many, many ways. It's incredibly useful when a fit model is knowledgeable about the construction process of a garment. She can actually describe in terms that a technical designer uh, can understand very easily um, what the problem is and then make corrections. We wanted to create clothes that were on par with Theory, Helmut Lang, Vince, consumers in double digit sizing didn't have access to that kind of clothing. Take the straps mm -hmm. down a little bit. Take up a little on the dart intake. You know, it's great there's pockets, but if you put stuff in your pockets, you're gonna have these lines here. What's the market like for extended sizes? I think a 
a lot of people believe there isn't a market for sizes above a 24. Well, it's a very simple answer. It's just wrong. I mean, 67% of American women are size 14 and above. That means a vast majority of American women are considered by old standards to be plus. And it's a huge market. It's growing uh, much faster than the straight size market is growing. Yeah, that opening is kind of high. Yeah, you're yeah, feeling it's it's a, little, a little bit, yeah. So on this one, I would drop her back neck a little bit more. Yeah, it's like a good, like, three-eighths. Yeah. We're going to adjust the sleeve grading because it's not comparable to our, our medium size. Mm -hmm. It's a three-quarter sleeve, and on you, it's a little longer. longer. Mm -hmm. I can tell that the brand has inquired about the fit for larger sizes by certain details. How's your lips feel? Good. Mm -hmm. Dresses that make sure that the back of the dress is a little teeny bit longer because if you have a big butt, it's gonna ride up in the back. Or if they put a little more room in the upper arms or in the neckline, especially for collared shirts. I think the only time that I was uh, thin was when I was born and that's okay. <laughs> Growing up, I struggled um, when I couldn't find my size because it made me question my worth and it was constant yo-yo dieting and when I would lose weight I would be happy and I would be able to fit into clothes and then I would gain the weight back um there was one time I had a woman on the bus yell at me that she thought I was disgusting and she spit at me she was so angry at me for being a fat woman and meanwhile I was just coming from the supermarket and I had bags in my hand I wasn't doing anything I had paid my 275 I was just on my way home she was so angry with me for taking space you know and just existing and she just kept saying you're gonna die you're disgusting and I couldn't believe that someone would spit at me because of the size I am. I'm a human being. I deserve to take space just like everyone else. And I need clothes just like everyone else. Do you need arms up or are you it's good? It's good, just for the side, baby. Okay. So there was one time that I got booked and I came in. I thought it was a regular fitting. I found out it was a lineup. And a lineup is when they have models for every single size in the range of the brand line up in the same outfit so that the company heads and the tech designers and stuff, they can look and see how each item looks on each size. So here I am, I'm at the end of the line because I'm the largest size. <laughs> and I'm looking down the line and I'm seeing all these gorgeous models and sometimes I forget and I'm like, wow, I'm standing in the line with all these gorgeous women and I'm like them. I've been signed for about five months now, but I don't get as much work as other girls who are smaller sizes. I do think that work will increase for me as more brands jump on board this kind of revolutionary idea of actually using someone that size to fit clothing that size. <laughs> I never thought in my lifetime that I would be wearing designer clothing and I have. So I think when women see me, they think, one, this company cares about me, two, the clothes are gonna fit, and three, if she can do it, I can do it.